We got Peekaboo Street here. Um, she's an Olympian, absolute savage of an athlete, and you're now how old? 52. 52 years old, and she she's trained at our gym on and off like over the last few years, and she's gracious enough to sit down, kind of talk about what she has going on now. So you went to the Olympics, did that whole thing, picked up one or two injuries, mm. um, and then how old were you when you stopped being competitive skiing? I was 33 when I retired. So you were my age yep. when you retired. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so right. what, what was the hardest part about that from a like, training and identity perspective? Mm, training and identity that's a there's a um there's a lot to both of those i think the training part um it kind of rules your world when mm. you're an athlete kind of trying to hit that that peak and that level um everything goes around it right what you yeah. what you eat what you drink how much you sleep um even who you're around and what kind of an atmosphere you have around you how much energy are you having a give take with you know some people give energy some people take <laughs> yeah. energy yeah and so <laughs> um good. you have to just be kind of careful and and more aware of all of that and so life was just based around that it was kind of the pivot point of everything was training and it was training for a performance base mm -hmm. really right and especially in the beginning of your career you're trying to build all this muscle you're trying to build all this this power and this endurance and then as you get older in in the you know inside of the career um you start to work on maintenance a little bit more you start to work on kind of preserving your body um you don't take as many runs you don't do as many reps in the gym of the tough stuff um and you kind of change up the way you train so there's an evolution that goes on during your career and then when you retire there kind of hits this point where you're like, hmm, what would I go to the gym for now? And why would I train now, right? Because taking that performance piece away from it, mm -hmm. at least for me anyway, it was like, I'm, I'm done training for performance. Yep. So it took me a while to actually embrace going back into the gym again. And, um, you how know, many, how many years? How long was that? Um, well, I I'd, interesting. I'd say probably almost 20. 20 Honestly, years before you're like... Before I really like landed on a reason to go to the gym that seemed legit mm -hmm. and that I could commit to. So you needed to find another why. Yeah, exactly. Because the first why was... Performance. Performance. Perfect. I'm going to win. Yep. And then took it was a journey, but what's the, what's the new why? The why now is longevity. It's, mm -hmm. it's wellness to keep up with my kids. Yeah. Um, it's mental, mental and emotional wellness as well. Mm -hmm. It brings so much like peace so quickly, even just to come into your gym and work out for 35 to 45 to 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. And um, if I'm, you know, being disciplined and I stretch afterwards, it's a little <laughs> longer. But oftentimes I'm like squeezing that in and then I'm boogieing out the door to go, you know, be mom. Mm -hmm. And I'm like a different person sometimes when I come in the gym, I just have so much stress from life that's yep. just natural mm -hmm. from, you know, having a home to kids to all the stuff that goes on in life. Um, and I walk out the door so much more relieved and so much more, um, fulfilled and, and so much more peaceful mm -hmm. and, and I, it, it's for me, right? Which I think when you are an athlete that's performing at a high level, you've got, um, all your friends and family you're trying to make happy and perform well for, mm -hmm. you've got all your coaches that you're trying to nail it for. And I mean, that's like every turn of every run of every day mm -hmm. that just becomes kind of an identity for you and that strive for perfection on a daily basis like run after run after run is really taxing and so it's really nice to actually just go in and go okay i'm just training for me i'm mm -hmm. training so that my jeans fit better i'm training so that my knees don't hurt i'm training so that i feel better about myself inside and and i'm less reactive to the world around me i'm more peaceful so yeah. that evolution has been really pretty cool and i'm really stoked it came around full circle for me finally to get to a spot where yeah. i you know i'm stoked to go and now it's kind of like i'm going to the gym and like I, i'll catch you all later turn the yeah. phone off literally like bug out for a while and yep. i find myself some days stretching it out because i want it to last longer because i mm -hmm. want to be in there longer and be doing more for me because the better I do for me, which so many people have said it, right? They say it on the airplane, put your oxygen mask on first. It's like so often you hear it, take care of yourself and you'll be better for others. And it's, um, 
I don't know. I guess it just takes maturity to kind of land in that spot and go, oh, okay, that actually is legit and real. Yeah. And now that I'm experiencing and I'm like, oh, yeah, even like I said, if it's only, you know, 35, 40 minutes of just doing the right stuff, mm -hmm. I think it makes a huge difference for me too because I've always been coached and I've always worked with a trainer. Yeah. And so you putting my program together for me gives me so much confidence that what I'm doing is what I should be doing and mm -hmm. I don't have to have that like anxious mind rust of – am I doing the right thing in the gym? And, yeah, yeah. you know, am I pushing too hard? And why am I sore? And I feel like my joint lines are less sore and my muscle bellies are, are more sore. And that's yeah. how it's supposed to be. That's what you want. Right? Yeah. That made me think of something. So you used to train, partly for you, partly it's for your coach. Because as a young athlete, mm -hmm. like, I had this super important to make, like, make your coach proud. Yep. Do what your coach wants. Um, you probably had dozens, if not more, coaches mm -hmm. Did you have uh, coaches that were really good coaches from a general perspective that you didn't vibe with so it didn't work out? Mm -hmm. Or they weren't good coaches for you? Yeah. Did you have bad – people, not bad coaches, but coaches that weren't as good, but they, they knew what made you tick and could yeah. pull stuff out of you? I think that it – I think that – Good coaches and bad coaches is really based on how well can they meet the athlete where they're at mm -hmm. and really jive with them and, and get them going. Yeah. And what do they say to them? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm kind of an anomaly in that if you tell me that you don't dig what I'm doing and you need me to push harder um, and kind of taunt me a little bit, I'm, I'm definitely chomp, <laughs> chomp on that and go for that. Um, I used to anyway. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. not so much anymore. Like, I don't care if I'm lifting a 15-pound dumbbell or a 45-pound dumbbell in the gym. Yeah. You know, if I'm, if I'm, I can crank a 20 kettle up over my head that way, and I don't care if anybody else can do it or not, right? Mm -hmm. That doesn't make a difference to me. It's a matter of what I'm doing for me. But when you're an athlete and you're going, you are trying to figure out what works right. And, and with the coaches, you've got a handful at any one given time. And there's probably a couple of them that really get you and they really – you know, know what to say. They really um, create a bond with you. And the, I think the most important thing about that is not just motivating you because when you get to that level where I was, everybody's right up, everybody's motivated. Yeah. Everybody's a type A driving it, trying to get there, right? It's more a matter of like, is that coach willing to take a risk with you mm -hmm. at go time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like call me on the radio at the start and say, you know, that line we inspected off the jump and through that whoop D and around that corner, run it, run it wide like we thought, go uphill a little bit to gain off the backside of that thing in a sprint downhill and win it by six tenths and yeah. make that call. Or switch skis right before I'm racing the Olympic Games. We ran my gold medal run on a pair of downhill skis that I won my silver on four years earlier. And it was a super G. But the way it was set was super wide open. And so my coach was like, we're running on mm -hmm. Oli's today. And just to have that confidence and just to have that kind of flexibility and, and connection to make that decision, um, that's when you really know that you're clicking with a coach and yeah. where you where you want to get to. You know, it's like I'm sure you have some clients who come in the gym and just by watching them walk in the door and how their gait is and the look on their face and how they're carrying their shoulders, you know whether or not to give them workout one, two, or three for the day. Right? Yeah. It's like, and it's like, oh, let's make an adjustment. they're rocking it. <laughs> let's make it a little bit of adjustment. And um, and you have that rapport. So I think that's the thing that, that I would encourage most people to search for is that coach that you really jive with that isn't afraid to push you when it's time to push you mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and, and pull you back off when it's time to pull you back off or tell you just straight out. There's some people who work so hard and they need to be told like mandated day off. Yeah. Like it's a full blown day off. <laughs> yeah. Like just stop yeah. and go eat some ice cream and sit in the sun, take your dog for a walk, like do something else Yeah. other than come in here and just bang it. But I know that in your, in your mind, the mental wellness that training can bring you is really, really legit. Mm -hmm. But I think finding that balance of that meditation or that peaceful, quiet moment or that visit with a friend that you would normally wouldn't sit down and take that balance is extremely important. And the older you get, you just kind of become more aware of that. And yeah, you know, you I think that schedule that time super important. The physical activity training good, great for your mental health, great for physical health. Yep. And as I've gotten older, I've had to learn how to um, get that peaceful feeling, get that satisfaction from things outside of just being active. Because right. if I hammer on Saturday, 
I sure as hell can't hammer on Sunday, and I'm only 33. But if I do two, <laughs> I can get away with it. But then Monday, Tuesday, I got yeah. I, there's a time where you got to draw it back. Yeah. And so kind of figuring that out. Yep. Um, it's not easy. No. And I think for some people, if they're at a super high level of intensity, you have a super intense day, and then you maybe just have a day where you come in the gym and you do some super light reps and you stretch out. And, mm -hmm. you know, because oftentimes the gym atmosphere, particularly your gym, it's so cool. Everyone's like, hey, what's up? When you Bye. come in, they say, hey, what's up? When you leave, there's good music playing. Sometimes it's cranking loud, depending on who's training. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's chill. You can put your own headphones in. Like, just, you know, some people just come in and chill in the gym environment just because it's so there's so much fellowship there mm -hmm. right and you feel really like you belong to a community um, and you just you know do some core work and stretch out and there's there's all the stuff you guys got all the balls and the and the foam rollers and all that kind of stuff to just do body maintenance mm -hmm. where it's not necessarily training hard but it's more just maintaining your your body and your wellness um, I think that's really important too so that balance can be if it's not okay for you to sit and be peaceful and read a book and you know, breathe six in, six out and meditate or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's some people who that just doesn't really work for. And I think that their vibration is a higher frequency. Therefore, just come in and do body maintenance and mm -hmm. stuff. And then you can keep the, you know, keep the pace going. Yeah. And the way we program that is there's a, a make peak more fit days. And then mm -hmm. there's also a make peak work better days. Yep. And the make peak work better days are they're not as fun. They're not, <laughs> they're not as hard. But it's the stuff that like really pays off. And so yep. making sure you get all of that in. And right now, most of the stuff we're doing with you is make peak work better because yep. you're kind of coming off of that hiatus a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it's cool. What's it like to know how you used to train and like getting after it versus what I know you're doing now when you're in the gym? Because it's, like, it's quite a switch. It is a switch, yeah. I think I had a long enough gap between that I'm not really uptight about what I can and can't do in the gym anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I over it. Yeah, I'm over it. Some yeah. people come in and, you know, tighten their, their belt down real <laughs> tight and put, you know, three racks on the side and go for it in the squat rack. And I'm just like, yeah, I've been there, done that. I, I, I don't miss it. Yeah. I don't miss that stuff. I like being in the here and now and, you know, doing what I'm doing and um, knowing that I'm, building strength, but I'm also building stability. I think that's the biggest thing for me now is the stability of, um, and the balance of that, right? Like this season when I skied, I was really strong. My mm -hmm. legs were really strong. My core was really strong. And so I could ski in a way that I used to ski. Yeah. And I had to be careful because I mean, I was, I'd rip 10 runs in an hour and be like, whoa, I gotta go. Like I need to be it's done for the day. It's yeah, time yeah. to get out of here because I've, torqued on my knees mm -hmm. a ton skiing that hard but my legs were strong enough to handle it and so I was like okay so strength wise I'm good to go but stability wise in my joint line just based on the deterioration of you know I'm bone on bone on both both you know all four, all four spots yeah, all four <laughs> spots. therefore there's you know there's only so much stability there and um but having that that strength in and in and right around the joint line made it possible to just crank like that and i was surprisingly not as sore as i thought i was going to be after that first 10 run one hour yeah, day it was sick. um yeah it was pretty cool so so that's kind of fun right to be able to get back in your domain and kind of feel yourself rip a little bit again that's definitely a was a super good feeling for oh, me for sure yeah what's what's the biggest difference in kind of your approach to skiing in the mountains from then versus now because then's performance now what is it um now i want to be able to go more than a couple three days in a row like if i could ski every day of the week that'd be super cool but that's yeah. kind of a stretch for me right now especially depending on certain snow conditions mm -hmm. um one of the other things that's really challenging is um cloudy days Hard where to see. the flat light mm -hmm, yeah. because then you're just articulating the entire time with all your little you know bellies are all trying to work together to make sure and you're kind of reacting to the snow at that point as opposed to acting and anticipating yeah, yeah, yeah. and being able to to you know suck up that terrain and really have your your shock absorbers working really well for you mm -hmm. it's kind of more of a reactive thing on a cloudy day and so i find that those days um even though i ski really aggressive still because i'm used to skiing in those days yeah. i'm more sore after yeah. those ones just because there's there was more you know that little fine tuning thing going on to try and maintain it um but yeah i ski for fun i i like to ski with groups of people and mm -hmm. you know chit chat on the chairlift and um, one of my favorite things to do is take people who are 
are pretty good skiers, um, but they're not, they're real humble about it and they're not really like showboaty. Um, and they've got different pieces of terrain that are and are not available to them depending on whether or not it's snowed, whether or not it's been groomed. Yeah. If it's cruddy, they'll avoid certain runs that haven't been, you know, that are not even either powder or groomed. Mm -hmm. And so the whole mountain isn't their playground they're kind of subject to mother nature and the mountain and its prep. And I love to take them and, and like break them through that. And yeah. like, nah, you can ski in everything. And oftentimes it just takes a couple little tweaks of something that they're doing and create a habit of, of range of motion for them. Um, you know, particularly the difference between guys and gals, like a, a girl's center of gravity or a woman's center of gravity is, is here in the hips and the, mm -hmm. in the midsection and the man's is in chest. Yeah. And so sometimes it's just a matter of like forcing a guy's hand hands forward where it's kind of feels goofy and you feel like a nerd and you're kind of skiing with your hands <laughs> yeah, real far yeah. forward and you want to just be able to cruise with them low but if you have them forward that puts your chest forward that puts you on the tip of the ski and then you're in charge of the top of the turn yeah whereas with girls it's the same thing you've got to kind of roll your hips forward and push your hips forward too which takes you out of that that real like that position and puts you up more there with your hips forward and mm -hmm. rolled which puts you on the tip of the ski and in charge and teaching them that the speed control is actually at the bottom of the turn, not the top of the turn. Yeah. And that's a big shift for a lot of people too. And being able to make that switch, that's so fun for me. Mm -hmm. Or skiing with a big group of, of ladies. Because women just kind of tend to enjoy their environment a little bit more. Mm -hmm. They look around and they look at the trees when you're on the cat track. And they mm -hmm. notice that it's a sunny day or what a cloud might look like. And, um, and they're really good at encouraging each other. Yeah. They're a little less competitive and a little more into like, you know, hey, how can we all have fun together? more of a of a fun community so mm -hmm. you know skiing with different people skiing with my kids watching them progress has been incredible i'm over protective of them on the hill <laughs> so they've progressed kind of more slowly than some other kids i think but just we've had less boo-boos you know there's yeah. they're not running into trees and and breaking stuff and whatnot and they're they're learning the the etiquette of the mountain and how the terrain kind of predicts that and who's got the right of way and what the fall line is and how often you can ski back and forth across it and how when you need to be in it and mm -hmm. different snow conditions and things like that. So just kind of teaching them that and watching them grow and go. And they're starting to get a little froggy now and be like, so what's up, mom? And I'm like, oh, don't even come with that mess. <laughs> I'm like, I still got you guys. <laughs> like, oh, I'm going to be... I'm going to be hobbling out onto the hill and click in Once and I'm in, still going to be rocking you guys. Yeah. It's, and that's one cool thing about skiing too, is it's, it's kind of a locked in, um, you know, with the, with the boots and the equipment, the way it is, they, it kind of stabilizes you a little bit more and people are able to kind of do it for a lot longer, you know, like to go hike up and hike back down again, works me over, mm -hmm. but I can go ski all day long and yeah, I'm, and I'm service, not so good. bad. Yeah. Yeah. With, um, with your kids, do they race? They don't race, not at all. They're, Your choice, their choice. Uh, totally my choice. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of what I figured. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of like been there, done that. I didn't really want to have them be ski racers, and yeah, it was pretty much my choice to not turn them on to racing any sooner than I had to. Um, mm -hmm. I've let them in the NASCAR course a few times, and they've run a couple little locals races and stuff. But it's a pretty gritty sport. Um, there's a lot yeah. of a lot of hammering and repetition for that one perfect run that really never ever happens, mm -hmm. and it it's really mentally trying. It's an exhausting sport for sure, and yeah. I know a lot of people who came out of it um, chewed up, chewed up, yeah. yeah, and both both physically, mentally, um, you know, and then emotionally. Obviously, as you get older, you've identified with that level of performance your whole life, and pretty soon you're you're not even capable of trying to perform like that. And, mm -hmm. it, you know, there's there's some people who have spun out over it and it's it's easy to do. So. Uh, I believe that. Yeah. So another interesting thing that you're doing now is you've got your academy. Yep. What we what got. got you stoked? We got 50 kids. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, it's it's been rad. And being able to mentor them and, and get, you know, be into what they're into and learning what they like and don't like and how so many of them that have like a – a sport that they're doing that they're intense about they've got something else going on in their life too that they're almost equally as passionate about like mm -hmm. playing guitar or art or you know a bunch of them are gamers and yeah. they are good gamers yeah. and they're competitive and they get together so that's all incentive right you uh -huh. just put that incentive carrot out there for them 
and you give them that you're going to you're going to study for 45 minutes you're going to game for 20 or 30 and then you're back to and back and forth and oh, give them that balance and it's super it works really great for you know a certain demographic so you guys would do so. that at school would be like all right you guys rage on the books yep. for 40 minutes and then yep. the next 20 minutes you're getting on xbox and getting after it or yep. whatever yep and you're all going to get to compete with one another and That's go for sad. it and then break it up and get back to school and yeah. you know and just give them that so that you're not always taking stuff from them and putting all these boundaries in place mm -hmm. plus we give them we put them in the driver's seat real early on you know get mom and dad out of the helicopter get the kids <laughs> in the driver's seat and say hey this is your education we've already done this your parents have already done this this is you now this is your deal mm -hmm. you do this and how many assignments do you want to put up this week right we meet with them on Monday and say what do you want to do you want to go big want to want to go small what's your what's your schedule like and we play second in timing to your sport but not second in anything else. It's just, you're gonna come in. If you, you're an alpine racer, you're going up early, you're getting the good snow, you're hammering that hard snow, you're hammering hard, and then you're gonna do you know a little bit of, of ski prep or some boot work or whatever, you're gonna have a good lunch, and then wham, you're coming into school, and then we got two and a half, three hours of like, boom, let's get a mm -hmm. time at school, and they're hammering out their, their work. And the coolest thing about my academy is the kids can work at their own pace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they can go as fast as they want to go as long as they're keeping a certain level of grade up, right? Mm -hmm. You get 275s on a quiz and your course gets locked, your mentor inside of our, our virtual delivery system or us at school are like, wait a minute, what happened? How come you're not, how come you didn't get this? Did you not take good notes? Are you, you know, not, mm -hmm. not focused? Like, Do you not gap? understand the material? Where's the gap? Find yeah. the gap, fill the gap, give them a chance to take that next quiz. They pop a 82 or above on it. And then they're, you know, they're, they're ready to go. They're back on it. They take the test, move on to the next unit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a mastery learning system. So there's no band-aid learning going on with us. You don't just kind of cheese ball your way through our education process and think you're going to get out the other end and, and get somewhere. No, most of these kids want to continue their education when they're done with their athletics and mm -hmm. we set them up to be able to do just that. Yeah. An AP course or an honors course with us is legit AP honors. It's not, oh, we're just going to give you more work at the same level. Yeah. It's not a bigger workload. That's not what it's it is. It's actually a more lot advanced of work. It's more advanced work. Yeah. Nice. So um, I when I was put on the team when I was 15 and uh, school became a challenge for sure. We were studying on the road and I was missing classroom time. And, you know, the te some teachers get really frustrated and don't dig that at all. Some classmates get really frustrated at that. And they're like, what's up with you? You're never here yet. You're still getting the same grades as me. That's not fair. Yeah. They don't understand, especially ones that are playing like sports that are within school like mm -hmm. some of the ball sports that are all you know you can play them schedule. all the way yeah. through school different schedule um and so i graduated high school through a correspondence curriculum out of the state of alaska okay. and it was before computers and everything so i was hauling a bunch of books and a bunch of notebooks around everywhere yeah. sit down flop it all out on the table get all my work done put it all in a package and send it all back up to alaska yeah. and hope that it got there in time because bill my History teacher was pretty staunchy about whether my deadlines. Yeah, they're yep, important. He was they're important, and so I had to make sure and get it right. And so mm -hmm. I always knew where the post offices were, and I always knew how much stuff cost to get here and there. And and um, yeah, I did it old school style that way. So I was like, that structure worked really great. That mm -hmm. whole model worked really great for me to be able to focus on my skiing, keep traveling. Yeah keep pushing towards that high level of, of performance and being an elite athlete, but I didn't have to leave my education for when I was done. Yeah. You know? And so, um, that's really where the seed got planted for yeah. me to want to start the Academy. And that's cool. And, um, now, yeah, Dan Camp runs it and he's a stellar dude and his ability to actually do the run the school portion and meet the students where they're at within their, within their yeah. curriculum is, is astonishing Pretty to me. Cool. Yeah. That's it's, awesome. he's, he's a very, very, uh, talented individual and the kids are really really lucky and they they dig it so and they're fun I mean they 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 pop in a lot of the kids when they first come to the academy they've tried the the what you call quasi regular route mm -hmm. for a while and beat their head against that wall yeah they've been ostracized by their classmates they've been hammered by their teachers they've told themselves that they're not smart because they're not getting the kind of grades they think they should get mm -hmm. um, they don't have the one-on-one -on -one time to understand the material and so they're a little bit on their heels and a little nervous when they come in the door and within two three weeks of being at the academy they're like 
like, oh. This is way better. This is awesome. And yeah. everybody in here is the same. And my teachers think I'm rad and I'm not stupid. And I can, I'm just not, I just was never moving fast enough. Mm -hmm. Or I didn't have that one-on-one -on -one time to understand the material, particularly in math, because that's, you know, that's kind of a linchpin for everybody. So we got Kelly right in house that she's got her own breakaway prep program that she does that, and she sees all of our students. So they are on a schedule with her and they go up and, you know, get, you're going through a, a unit and you got, I don't know, 27 problems and 16 of them are, are good to go. And the rest of them, you've got to go see Kelly for, mm -hmm. and you walk in with, with those problems with those in problems mind and, just... and boom, she hammers you through it and it can keep you moving. Yeah. And the best thing I think for the kids is, and it doesn't really matter what sport they're in, they've all got a season or they've got a year round. Mm -hmm. But there's really kind of a, a competition season or a competition block that yeah, comes for, for sure. them, right? The biggest thing is is getting them fast tracking to where they're ahead so far in their schoolwork that by the time that time comes for them to really hammer, mm -hmm. like we've got hunter jumpers who you know are, are doing their equestrian hunter jumpers. Those shows are sometimes they're sometimes they're three, five, seven, ten days long. Yeah. So those kids can be gone for two weeks, a little over two weeks mm -hmm. at a comp. Well, if they're 30 assignments ahead in all their classes, they're not worried about schoolwork while they're gone. They're not, yeah. They're, they're, not, uh, they're in not doing their, up. yep, they're yeah. in doing their competition. They're they're doing their thing. Um, the kids all run the Instagram and Facebook oh, cool. accounts. Yeah. So they all post on there as they want to. And they've all, because of social media, they're friends with one another and they're cheering for each other. Mm -hmm. And the diversity we have in-house is amazing. And the fact that they're all privy and up to speed on everyone's sport and the ins and outs of it and when people are competing they all keep track of it and they, yeah. they give each other a, a lot of support and there's a full-blown community yeah. in that digital virtual world for them too so you know it's pretty neat it's it's definitely working out um That's and sweet. the best part is when they all come in and luckily they don't all come at the same time because we've got 50 of them and mm -hmm. so it's a it's a revolving door of who's in there based on their season and their competitive cycle yeah. and um but they come in and sit down and i mean some of them can really produce some some good work really mm -hmm. fast and it doesn't yeah. take them long to to kind of get you know get ahead as far as they want to get ahead and then just and then they're gone and they're out and everybody's like you know peace catch you when you get back and there's the support yeah. for them for when they you know they're taken off for a long time and, yeah everybody's stoked and they're yeah everybody's stoked yeah. for them and they're That's you know cool. follow them on social and then when they come back in but you really get some good work and some good mentor time with them when they come in because they're they're home and they're chilling um you know on the other kind of not so positive side of it is say they get injured mm -hmm. um they can really roll up their sleeves and and really gain some serious progress with school so you can put a shiny spot and put there. a shiny spot on that for them and yeah. be like dude you're gonna like you can f you could finish 10th grade before you ever even get back on snow yeah and just flat out be done and you can graduate high school early if you want to or if you want to take it slow and not be doing that and focus on something else a little harder and or learn something else or take a different class you know we have 122 electives i think okay yeah. right so you got your four cores you've got to take but then there's all of these options in there that we spice it up with kids like let's take nutrition Mm -hmm. for a for a point That's five cool. yeah. right and then you're you're getting a credit for it or a part credit for it and you're learning nutrition you're learning what's new what people have discovered mm -hmm. you're up to speed the other really cool thing about it is um like photography you know things like that because they're out and about traveling so and they take cool that. pictures of the castles in europe yeah. or whatever it is right um or let's say um they're into something and like they want to learn a language like we had one little girl come and she came in wanted to go to school with us and when she f when she figured out that in the language block we had american sign language mm -hmm. she was so stoked because someone in her family or her best friend's sister or somebody close to her in her in her friend family group uh was deaf uh, so she and so that. she learned sign language to be able to communicate with them mm -hmm. and be able to like take them to concerts and do the do the translating uh, dirt for, of the lyrics and the songs and different stuff like that. And that was literally the one piece that she went like, oh, I'm in. Yeah. I'm going. Right. And so it's just that little piece of something that they're into that they can go for already and they don't have to wait mm -hmm. until they're done with high school or they don't have to wait until their junior year they or right whatever now. they can they can go in yeah. right now and do it and they can take as many as they want to that's sweet you know or as few as they want to mm -hmm. really just like yeah you can kind of personalize it a little yeah, bit yeah you can totally and they personalize have, it they have input so you get more buy-in yeah and then the other thing is like in in history classes and stuff because it's all a virtual delivery mm -hmm. 
it can change. You know, Russia invades Ukraine and boom, it's in the curriculum. Oh, you can talk about it. And it's, uh, you can talk about it right yeah. away. And it's in there and the kids are learning about it in real time. Yeah. So they That's keep cool. up with world events Kinda as they're current. going on and they're learning, they're learning it and they've got this structure of, you know, building up in middle school into high school that now this world event happens and it's like, oh, why? And mm -hmm. you can kind of draw these patterns of these almost 80 to 100 year cycles that go on yeah. that end up in our economy ending up the way it is, our politics ending up the way it is, yeah. our cultural relations with other countries, uh -huh. uh, just the whole thing. They can catch, start catching those cycles at an early age. And I mean, they are so privy to so much more stuff now at such a young age than we ever were. Oh, for sure. It's yeah. just incredible. And you can have some of the coolest conversations with them. Yeah. Um, That's pretty and then the Olympics are evolving tremendously as well. And there's other big pop-up sports and events going on. And so like going into Tokyo, there was more women's events than ever. And then there was the all the new events that came in. And then there was the co-ed events that mm -hmm. came in and writing the team awards and things like that and so to sit down with them and bring them all up to speed on that kind of stuff too just so that they have a bigger broader awareness and everyone's like oh they're buried up in their phone and they're not paying attention it's like have you really sat down with them and yeah. had a conversation because yeah stuff. no they're paying attention yeah and they're just easy they have a better time an easier time deciphering the bs mm-hmm they just can see through it and they're like, don't patronize me with that nonsense. I get it. Yeah, or are you trying to blow smoke and mirrors my way? I'm not buying it. Yeah. I'm, you're out. You, you're, you know, unfollow, delete, take you out. I'm not watching you anymore because yeah. you're just, you know, you're just a talking head. <laughs> yeah. So do you, two, uh, two questions because I want to respect your time. Um, do you take the kids out in the winters? Skiing? Like, yeah. Yeah, there's different ones that I go ski with for sure. Um, I enjoy taking the kids to do the freestyle part of their sport. Like, take kids free skiing that are alpine racers. Mm -hmm. and get them, to get enjoy them, the mountain. Get them out of chasing the gates and yeah. let's go ski pow. Um, let's go ski some crud on your Super G skis so you become super comfortable on them. Um, let's go remember the love for the sport, mm -hmm. right? Um, we like to take the hockey players out and put them in figure skates and the figure <laughs> skaters and put them in hockey skates and yeah, yeah, yeah. try and just, you know, teach them that diversity and, and remind them how much they love the sport. It's one thing when I mentor them too and I talk to them, it's like how, what are you doing if I catch somebody who's in too much of a rut and they're too in their head? I'm like, when was the last time you just went and like, skated with your family or skied with your family or you know played some soccer with your little brother or mm -hmm. or just went out for a trail ride in a western saddle instead of being on your you know on your english saddle all perched up like just. this doing your <laughs> dressage thing or your yeah, yeah, you know yeah. or jumping on a horse did you uh -huh. when's the last time you went and swam in the pond with your horse or you know when's if you're a swimmer when's the last time you've gone to the lake and just paddleboarded and swam around so mm -hmm. yeah that's the big thing is trying to keep them the balance of of loving the sport cuz there's so much specialization that's going on in athletics at such a young age yeah. now that trying to keep that diversity there and um, that's really fun to try and talk the kids into going and doing different fun stuff you yeah know? Um, you know teaching somebody who's who doesn't normally go rock climbing teach them how to go Love rock climbing it. or use rock climbing as a way to teach team building because mm -hmm. because when you're on the belay rope down below <laughs> you have an important job you've got a really important <laughs> job right and yeah, yeah. say you've got two athletes that don't really get along that great. Yeah. You put them put in them that like environment. That. Yeah. And then they've both got to take a turn at climbing the same face. Yeah. And one's belaying and one's climbing and then you swap it on them. And, you know, you get somebody on the rope who's got someone they don't really dig or trust down in belay. Mm -hmm. It's it's challenging for both crews because everybody's aware of what's going yeah. on. You can, like, feel the tension in the air. Yeah. Um, and you just, you can kind of break it real fast yeah. with with just turning them on to something different. So yeah. yeah, it's fun to go out and, and that's when you really get to know them too, right? You, you get to know them in a different environment and a different atmosphere, even if you just go hike up to the lake and have lunch and, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of talk smack on oh, the way. It's like, what are you into? What do you like? Yeah. Well, that's you know? why we're sitting out here on your front porch instead of like know, at right? the gym or something. It's like, yeah. get people in a different environment. Get away. It's a little more fun. Yep. It's a little more relaxed. Yeah. And then the final question, closing thoughts. Um, 50, 52, right? Yep. 52 year old peak. If you could talk to 33 year old peak at retirement, what would you say to get you taking care of yourself physically, getting in the gym? Like, what? what's that conversation? What have you learned in those 20 years that you could spit that little nugget back to yourself? 
Because well, I think there's a lot of people that 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 need that wisdom yeah. that you've gained. Um, I think I think one of the most important things is is would the 33 year old listen to the 52 year old? That's very. That's true. probably a really yeah. big clincher, right? Um, but I think if I could speak to that to that person, um, uh, I think I would get into more more meditating and more breathing and more like just calming and that that balance on the other side of it and um turning my brain off and not being so overly anxious and and you know calculating all the time what's going on um that's what made you great and you it, had to learn how to turn it off yeah i had to learn how to turn it off and 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 not carry it into everything else I'm doing. Like, you know, did I bring my list to the grocery store and did I remember everything? And it's like the grocery store is literally five minutes away. If you forgot yeah. something, you can either go back for it or get it later. It's just, di you know, going ahead and giving yourself a chance to dial that down. Um, I think the other one is, is and I and this one would go even further back, and this is something that I do do with, with younger kids, is what else are you into? And that's one of the most... Uh, surprising things that I've discovered in mentoring younger kids is mm -hmm. they a lot of them do really have something else that they're into they do have something that they're that they're passionate about mm -hmm. and they're brave enough to go kind of start down that path of learning that being lame or sucking at it like a yeah. lot of you know a lot of military guys who got done and had to switch up and go swap up their worlds mm -hmm. I have a friend who um who was a, a Navy SEAL and he swapped up into internet marketing and he said, man, it was so much easier to get my team of SEALs together to go on a mission and to be successful <laughs> than it was to bring 50 different personalities together and and guide them and, and, and encourage them down the path of creating a great business and, mm -hmm. and you know, producing a good model. And he said it was it was so much more challenging to to kind of all those different personalities and all that different, right? I think embracing uh, where people have come from and what they've learned and how they've learned it and what they have to offer. I mm -hmm. think being more open-minded to that, I think would be something I would I would tell my 33-year-old self to, um, you know, be, be cool sitting down and having those conversations with the people who've got probably a really different perspective than mm -hmm. me and be totally open to listen to that perspective and go, mm, what's the morsel in that that I can take yeah. for my life, right? Uh -huh. um, that applies to my world or how can I look at my thing a little bit differently because I've now looked through through their perspective, which it's hard to do, right? Prescription glasses are made for uh, everybody in particular, and so if I give you my prescription glasses and you try and read with them, you're not going to hold the paper at the same place in order to get the yeah. the visuals right, right? And I think it's the same thing with with people, and it takes a lot to kind of get over yourself and into um, their perspective and their frame of mind. So that'd be something to, you know, I'd say chit chat with different people and listen to what they got going on. Um, the other one is probably just be be brave um, to go out there and kind of dive into the world and and have those random conversations. Mm -hmm. um, I, when I had, when I was pregnant with my youngest, with my oldest, my first child, um, I really never really went in that grocery store aisle that has like the diapers and the, the wipes and the baby food <laughs> and all of that stuff, right? Yeah, you just yeah. kind of, there's one end of it that has some stuff and you go in there and you come back out again, but you never really go down that aisle. And I started going down that aisle and I had some of the most important conversations I've had in my life with people in that aisle yeah. about what does and doesn't work and what kind of skin types work with different products and, you know, what kind of food to start with. And, you know, if I had my way, I would have started with the sweet fruits for the babies on their baby food. Mm -hmm. And I had one woman tell me one time, oh, no, start with the super bland vegetable stuff like green beans. Yeah. Because if you start feeding them that sweet food that. right away, they're <laughs> never going to go for the green stuff, right? So feed them the green stuff first and then slowly add in the sweet stuff. And just little morsels like that, you know, look for um, look for your coaches that aren't, aren't necessarily, you know, dressed coach. in their ski team outfit with coach written in big letters on their back. There yeah. may be the mom in the aisle or, you know, the, the other athlete that's your age that's now kind of hammering through it too. Yeah. And, um, ask for you know their perspective on how it's going and see what applies to your life and and um, you know be ready to adjust it up and and I I think the biggest and most important lesson that I would that I would try and teach my younger self is is it's okay to take care of me yeah it, it's it's okay to 
drink my water. It's okay to put my oxygen mask on first. It's okay to go to bed early. It's okay to go to the gym and take care of myself. It's mm -hmm. okay to take time out of my day and do something for me or a couple things for me or, you know, or even go away from the kids um, for two or three days and let them stay with somebody else and just decompress and, and kind of have mom time. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that that's probably the most difficult and most challenging thing that I've had to embrace um, since retirement is and, and since be becoming a mom because I became a mom two years after I retired and so it was kind of like oh whoop I was able to Put switch that all that on mom. right yeah. so I was able to kind of crank that in and be a super intense mom and I'm now getting to the place where it's like oh you know I'm gonna I gotta take care of me and it's okay to take care of me and and, and it's and it's good too and I look at the at the long end like what's gonna take less years off the end of my life now yeah what can I do to to you know stretch that that yeah. boy out and set some goals in there too you know i'd love to i'd love to ski into my 80s and 90s if i could it'd be super fun i love that's when what i'm I all see, about right yeah when i see old people out there going for it and they're like i said they can barely walk out to the hill and they click in and then you're like whoa and they just yep and they roll yeah. and they're smooth and they're smiling and lighting that cerebellum up in their brain and you know getting that dopamine hit it's um yeah it's something i want to be able to do yeah for sure that's perfect. I think that's beautiful. Great way to end it. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thanks, Ben. It's dope. Right.